Welcome back to the Space School Log, otherwise known as PPSW, and today we're back with another Star Wars theory. Before I go any further, though, I want to shout out to our Discord. Down below, check out the link. It's an amazing Discord server, very friendly community. I also get the shout out videos in the future, so you get to see what I'm working on throughout the week, and you get to interact with me as well, so really awesome community. Go check it out down below. Also, subscribe for a chance to win one of three lightsabers that I'll be giving away when I hit 10k subscribers. Let's get straight into the theory. Today we'll be discussing what would have happened had Anakin Skywalker fallen in love with Asajj Ventress. For context, going into this video, Asajj was born in 50 BBY while Padme was born in 46 BBY. Anakin, on the other hand, was born in 41 BBY, so that all of you mathematicians can get all the math you need so that you can feel however you want to feel about this. I really don't care. Uh, this was a really hard theory for me to work on. I really didn't realize how little interactions that Anakin and Asajj Ventress had going into this, and I had to work around that, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I put a lot of work into this. I spent like three days writing this, so uh, I hope you guys do enjoy this. How would Anakin falling in love with Asajj Ventress have changed the outcome of not just Anakin, but the galaxy itself? Let's get straight into, well, not the news, but the video. The story begins seven weeks after the initial invasion of Genosis, and seven weeks after the marriage of Anakin and Padme. On a peaceful world of Christophsis, a battle is about to take place. It's a large task force against the Separatist invasion. Both Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker lead their legions on a counter-assault to stop the Seppis. Also, while the Republic tries to fish out a traitor that has been discovered within their ranks as they prepare for the mass of battle that will ensue in hours. Two Jedi travel behind enemy lines, under the cover of night. As they make their way to enemy headquarters, they confront a bald-headed Dathomir woman and she's dressed tightly, with a skirt and thin lined cloth around her upper body. She didn't exactly seem thrilled to see the Jedi sneaking around the HQ. A few snarky remarks were made back and forth towards one another before a lightsaber duel began. It was flashy and it led up some stairs that were located within the building. Master and former apprentice mirrored what they could have been and what they could have done had they done this together against Dooku not so long ago on Genosis. The duel was matched, Asajj Ventress was a fearsome and powerful duelist. She made the two Jedi struggle in their duel, always taunting the two of them, though unlike in canon, where she flirted with Kenobi, she would flirt with Skywalker. It would be harmless taunting and flirting, just trying to dig into Anakin's rage and anger. She learned this from her master, Dooku, who specialized in taunting his opponents during combat. To an extent, this actually worked, but it wouldn't be long before Asajj led the Jedi into a trap of which she would escape the HQ only for the Jedi to see the massive invasion force that was preparing to take over Christophsis. The Jedi had to escape back to their front lines to prepare for the assault. When they returned, they learned that a traitor named Slick blew up most of the vehicles within the army. As the night became day, battle ensued. It was a relentless combat, though it did lead to a break in the combat, which brought the Jedi to meet a Padawan assigned to Anakin Skywalker, named Ahsoka Tano. Anakin was skeptical of his new apprentice, but through an accomplished mission and sincere team building between the two of them, he believed their future together could be bright. Though victory seized on Christophsis, Anakin and Ahsoka were immediately dispatched to the planet Toth to rescue Jabba the Hutt's son. During the siege of an old smuggler's den, Anakin and his Padawan would lead a successful 90 degree assault on the Seppis. The real fun began while Anakin and Ahsoka were inside of the building looking for the son of Jabba the Hutt. As the two Jedi found the child Hut, Asajj Ventress and a group of super clankers led a counter-offensive on the clones stationed outside and inside of the building. Ventress made her way in to where she would insult Ahsoka and flatter herself with more flirts and taunting towards Skywalker. Anakin was becoming protective of his young apprentice, and so the taunting and almost flirting was sent back towards her. It was weird, it was a bond, it was kind of odd, but the Jedi needed to escape with the Hut child, so it was obvious that they needed to move on from this flirt. And so, they made their way out of the smuggler's base and onto a platform. They sealed the doors off from Asajj Ventress. As the rest of this arc continues, the two Jedi eventually get to Jabba's palace and Jabba and his son reunite. Anakin would have dueled with Dooku on Tatooine and the Clone Wars would be in full throttle. It wouldn't be much later until Anakin was dispatched on a mission to an abandoned world in the Outer Rim, named Yavin 4. It was one of the moons of a gas giant known as Yavin. On Yavin 4, a group of clone troopers aided by Anakin Skywalker pushed through the brush in the steamy jungle environment against a group of B1 clankers. It wouldn't be long though before Anakin felt a disturbance. It was a presence that was familiar to him. She was stealthy and quick. And as the Republic clone troopers pushed forward in combat, Anakin's clone captain, Captain Rex, would be thrown 
into the brush by the force. Anakin, who's standing beside Captain Rex, twists his body to see the ever so elegant Asajj Ventress as she flies through the tree stealthily. Anakin tells his men to push to the offensive and calls for a medic for Captain Rex, who is staggering around in the trees. Anakin starkly remembered her. Always a pleasure to see her lovely face, he remarked. She just growled at him and so the battle begun. Anakin wasn't exactly confident. The last lightsaber duels for him weren't actually tremendous victories. They were rather tragic. He barely escaped Dugu the first time and escaped him the second time on Tatooine. And he and Obi-Wan struggled against Asajj the last time they encountered each other. Anakin felt a bit of enjoyment from this little rivalry. He wasn't exactly fond of Ventress herself, but he began to regain his focus. He was fighting a formidable adversary. Their battle raged through the forest, cutting down trees and bushes alike. It led them towards one of the grand pyramids that stood on the forest floor. As the two battled, it led up the stairs, and their conflict worsened. It was blow for blow, but the battle took a turn when Ventress slashed up, catching Anakin's cheek. Anakin falls down after the blow, and Asajj towers over him. As he reaches for the cut, Anakin feels demoralized. For being the Chosen One, he has lost so many lightsaber duels in the four months since the beginning of the Clone Wars. Anakin holds his lightsaber up to defend himself, but Ventress just looks down on him, smiling at his failures. Anakin is enraged by this as he jolts from the ground up, and the wave of energy propelling him forces Asajj off the pyramid. Ventress falls down below and disappears into the brush. Anakin looks down and feels victorious, but then he hears the firefight and decides he must join his men, and so he does. The Battle of Yavin 4 is won by the Republic as Ventress fled the system, and Anakin feels the joy of his first victory but the repercussions of his second battle scar. The war after Yavin 4 continues, and Anakin's bond with his apprentice grows too. Though, because of his constant appearance on the battlefront, Anakin is distanced from Padme, which causes a bit of struggle for their relationship. It's long before something will rattle the core of their relationship when Rush Clovis is introduced to Anakin. Padme shows some odd characteristics, some of which make Anakin feel as if there wasn't something that Padme was telling him. He felt uneasy by this, not to mention the dispute between the two of them before Padme's mission with Rush. Anakin, who was so obviously not fond of this, was even more enraged when he found out that Rush Clovis had drugged her. For Anakin, this felt like a bit of a hole in the foundation of their relationship. Who else was Padme trusting of that wasn't safe for her to be around? Though Anakin was protective, maybe his overbearing protectiveness was hindering their relationship. Though it all continued, Anakin didn't realize it, but internally he missed the rivalry that Ventress gave him. It may have been a love-hate feeling, but internally Anakin was unsure of why he was drawn to Ventress. He couldn't tell if it was the general attraction, missing Padme, or even the slightest possibility of lust. Though Anakin would soon forget about this because for months he wouldn't see her in battle. Not to mention Anakin was training Ahsoka and he simply adored her. He was so prideful of her and it was continuously evident by Anakin. Anakin was a good man, and he really cared for those around him. Anakin's dedication to Ahsoka, Padme, and Obi-Wan were shown in his life every day. As the months trailed on, and Anakin's legion became primarily used in combat, Anakin faced some of the worst the war had to offer. But it wouldn't be long before he would cross paths with not just one of the most crucial moments in the war, but that of Asajj Ventress. When the evasion of Kamino commenced, it was hell for the clones. Cadets, clone troopers, maintenance, Kaminoans were all targets. The Jedi fended off the aerial invasion, but the underwater invasion caught the entire facility at Topoka City off guard. The battle didn't lag on, and the droid forces were relentless. Backed by General Grievous and Asajj Ventress, the battle was going badly for the clones. It wasn't long until General Kenobi engaged General Grievous on the battlefront, and Anakin Skywalker caught Asajj Ventress trying to steal the clone trooper genotype. Anakin confronted her, and again, there was a rise of bondful tension. The two of them, in their own unique way, had a bond. It was not just a rivalry they shared with one another, but they each had a way with words that drew them into each other. They flirted heavily, but it wasn't necessarily a result of infatuation with one another. They simply had a joy of the engagements they had with one another. The battle begun as Anakin toyed with her verbally. Their lightsaber combat led them throughout hallways, and even though Ventress had age on Anakin, it was Anakin who was gaining skill on Ventress. It wasn't unforeseen that Anakin would eventually grow to become more powerful than her, but for Ventress this came as a shock. 
She was able to best Anakin alone before, yet he was already so powerful. Anakin began pushing Ventures back through the corridors and outside. The battle then became an even match across the blandly gray covered sky. It wouldn't be long before the clones saw the confrontation closing in on their position. Anakin would soon be able to best Ventures, a small victory for him personally, but as he beat her, he secured a much larger victory for the Republic by helping the clones keep the Jango Fett genotype. With the Republic victory over Kamino, Anakin thought back to this duel, pridefully. Though Anakin was a bit disturbed, he was thinking about Ventress almost as much as he was Padme. He, did he really want someone that couldn't relate to him like Ventress could? Maybe not emotionally, but in terms of power, Asajj could use a force. These thoughts didn't just perturb Anakin, they tormented him. He started believing that there was something wrong with his relationship with Padme. It was only reinforced by the Rush Clovis incident that had happened not so long before. Between Ventress and Skywalker, their bond would show through their countless engagements. The two were evenly matched, but the flirty conversations and taunting only drew Anakin in even further. It wasn't like he was a masochist, uh, but he loved the instant thrill of Ventress. In a way, it was a lot like Padme in Attack of the Clones for Anakin. He loved to chase after her. The only issue is for Anakin that he didn't know if he were actually genuinely attracted or just thrilling in lust. The war would continue, and it wouldn't be long before Anakin encountered Ventures after she had been betrayed by her master. Inside the hangar bay of a Providence-class ship, Anakin and Obi-Wan confronted the betrayed Asajj Ventures. Anakin truly felt for her, but he couldn't reveal his feelings in front of Kenobi. Their duel ended with another swift escape from Ventress as she got away from the combat. Ventress returned to her homeworld of Dathomir as Anakin assumed the worst of someone he decided he genuinely had feelings for. Maybe not as romantic as Padme, but those feelings were genuine. He really began to care for her because he was beginning to see similarities between the two of them. It wasn't that Obi-Wan betrayed him, but he did feel that the Order had done so. Ventress left the Order because her master had died, and she felt like the Order had left her behind and betrayed her. Though it wouldn't be long before Anakin's stance had changed as Obi-Wan would fake his death to undermine a plot to stop an assassination on the Chancellor. This would further Anakin's distrust in the Council, but it would make Anakin feel betrayed by his master as well. Because of... Because after all, it were his master who suggested keeping Anakin in the dark about the situation. Anakin found counseling from the Chancellor, who was always a good friend to him, though Anakin felt as if he understood Asajj Ventress a little bit more from the situation, though it wouldn't take much more to shake his trust in the Order again. When an invasion of Kato Nemodia began, Anakin and Ahsoka were brought back to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, which had just been bombed. As the two Master and Apprentice returned to Coruscant to help discover who would have attacked the Jedi Temple, after an investigation and the death of the assumed Temple Bomber's wife, Ahsoka was present for her death. Ahsoka was then blamed for the death of the wife, and Ahsoka fled into the underbelly of Coruscant. She was blamed for it because the wife of the Bomber was killed by the use of the Force. As Ahsoka fled into the lower level, she ran into a former Separatist agent named Asajj Ventress. Ventress, since being betrayed and escaping multiple attempts on her life from Dooku and Grievous alike, she had become a bounty hunter of sorts, and Ahsoka seemed like a great bounty to capitalize on, though the two would have a bit of similarity, and instead of turning in a rival of hers, she would aid Ahsoka. Everything changes when Ventress is knocked out by someone who snuck up on her. When Asajj awakens, she realizes that her lightsabers were missing, and so she is crippled by this turn of events. Without her lightsabers, she is unable to defend herself when Anakin Skywalker comes into the lower levels looking for her. Because of Anakin's dedication to his apprentice, he was ready to kill Ventress when he found her, striking at her ferociously until she relayed the information. He told her that he would be back for her depending on the circumstance of the trial. As the events continued down the road, as they were in canon, Anakin would return to the lower levels. He was very distraught after the loss of Ahsoka. She had left the Order and was beginning her life without the Order and without Anakin. Anakin found Ventress and without much berate or anger, he shyly apologized. He felt that in the very least he should be appreciative for her help with revealing who framed Ahsoka. The right Jedi was behind bars, while the wrong Jedi was now beginning a new life. Ventress was thankful for the gesture. It would be helpful for her bounty hunting after all. As Anakin turned, she placed a hand on her shoulder. She herself 
even through her thick skin, apologized to Anakin over losing his Padawan. Anakin was very appreciative for her gesture, as he vanished into the smog of the lower levels. Much like the smoke of which Anakin left Ventress in, Anakin's current relationship would become clouded in. It wouldn't be much long after Anakin lost his apprentice, when his relationship with Padme Amidala began to become at risk, because of Rush Clovis again. And while Padme was swooning Rush, he made a move on her, as Anakin walked in on them. His trust was broken, and his rage grew. Anakin went blow for blow with Rush, putting him through hell, before realizing the possible consequences of his action. When security arrived, Rush covered for Anakin, most likely out of fear of the powerful Jedi. As for Anakin and Padme, they were over. Their marriage was being ended by Padme. Anakin wanted to be what she needed, but even he knew that this relationship wasn't healthy for the two of them. Anakin here wouldn't chase after Padme, he knew it wouldn't be worth it this time. And so, like he did when he was a child, he left the temple for a bit during the night. Anakin as a Padawan used to sneak out to enjoy the city life. Now, he didn't need to sneak out, but this night he would travel into the lower levels. Anakin went in disguise, he didn't want to be recognized as a Jedi, he just needed to escape the thoughts of his broken relationship. Skywalker rolled himself into a bar and sat down at a hollowed out booth. The bar wasn't filled, but it was active with a group of guild members awaiting for a bounty that they were really excited for. The bar wasn't filled, but it was active with a group of guild members awaiting for a bounty they liked. They surrounded a hollow table waiting for that bounty. One of the lower level's renowned bounty hunters entered the bar. The guild member stepped back as they looked at her. She carried herself well, but as she was walking in, she turned to see someone that she thought she knew. It turned out she did know who it was, Anakin Skywalker. Instead of going over to the hollow table, she joined Anakin and slid into a seat adjacent towards him. The last time the two had met, they had both ended on equal terms. Anakin had helped her and Asajj had helped Anakin, though this time it were different. Both Anakin and Asajj would have a very great heart-to-heart. -heart. It wouldn't be long before Anakin would be redeployed, but Anakin and Ventress spent this time together in the bar. They enjoyed each other's presence. They both expressed individual perspectives of everything that had transpired up until this point. And though Anakin felt this raging anger down below inside of him, he didn't want revenge on Padme. He felt like someone needed to pay, maybe Clovis, for tearing the relationship apart. Ventress picked up on this, and through all of everything they discussed, she was able to sense that there was something eating Anakin up from the inside. She wasn't fond of doing work for free or against people who had power within the Republic, but she decided that she would ask Anakin if he wanted to embrace that darkness and assist him in killing Clovis. She told Anakin that it would make him feel better, but Anakin, even as bad as he felt about the breakup, decided that it wouldn't be worth it that it weren't the Jedi way after all, and so Ventress backed down from the offer, and the conversation explored a little further. Hours into the night, their connection got deeper and deeper. There was a real bond between the two of them, and it was completely natural for Anakin to feel drawn to someone like Ventress. It may have been too soon or too late, but Anakin felt more compassion from Asajj than he ever really felt from Padme. It's not that Padme wasn't caring, but Ventress understood more of what Anakin was going through. With the feelings of betrayal, loss, discomfort, and discomfort with the Order, Anakin didn't know if this were lustful or if it were truthful. His feelings, his emotions were all clouded. He didn't know if Asajj was feeling any of the same emotions he was. It felt like there were a cloud surrounding them. Ventress was so focused on her bounty hunting that she hadn't considered a relationship. Truthfully, she had been betrayed so many times that it was easier for her to cut people out of her life. Asajj didn't realize or remember how nice it was to really enjoy spending time with someone. Being with Skywalker here was the first heart-to-heart -heart she really had in a long time, if at all. Anakin gave her a breath of fresh air. The two decided to leave the bar and head back to a small residence of which Asajj called home. It wasn't much of anything, but it was hers. They would go on to spend the rest of the night intimately enjoying each other. When the sun peered into the chasms of the lower levels of Coruscant, Anakin awoke and Ventress had left. When he got up, he saw a piece of paper that had her calm frequency written on it, if they wanted to rekindle. Anakin was tired, but he decided it were time to head topside. Anakin still felt bad though. He wasn't happy about what had just encountered between Padme and Rush Clovis, and he wasn't sure what to think of his extended night with his former rival. Something made Anakin feel secure with Ventress, though. And yes, she was out and about on her own. He didn't feel a lustful attraction to her. 
like he may have with had like he may have had with Padme. For Anakin, the bond between him and Ventress was deep. They both in their own way felt abandoned by those who had meant the most to them. Of course, Anakin still had Obi-Wan, but he was still fearful that he would lose Obi-Wan too. The Clone Wars were coming closer and closer to an end, and during this period of time where Anakin had been deployed, his new love interest was finding herself someone to intermingle with. Ventress, of course, was getting closer and closer to Quinlan Vos. Though it was no accident that Ventress and Anakin kept reuniting on Coruscant, funnily enough, Ventress wasn't exactly sure how to feel about all this. She wasn't exactly one for relationships. She certainly enjoyed that time that she had with Anakin, and especially the time they had spent together that first night, but she also enjoyed the rambunctious nature of Quinlan Vos, who was ever so unpredictable and not like a Jedi. She loved that about him. Ventress still enjoyed Anakin when he returned to Coruscant to deal with the situation surrounding Art Trooper 5555. Anakin and Ventress would enjoy their time with one another for one final time. They would have a much similar experience before she was en route to Christophsis. The place was, ironically, the place where the two had met. Anakin wished her luck and Ventress's name wouldn't be spoken to him for another couple months. During his isolation on the battlefront, he knew he was ready to tell her how he really felt. His assumption was that Asajj had a difficult mission and that maybe she was imprisoned by the people of Christophsis. It certainly was possible, but it weren't impossible for her to escape. Anakin knew this and as the rest of his weird day played out, Anakin was aboard a Venator heading towards Coruscant. It was a siege of Coruscant and so Anakin and Obi-Wan were tasked with saving the Chancellor, and the plan to turn Anakin was fully finished. A duel between Dooku and Anakin would ensue as Obi-Wan was knocked out of the fight early. Instead of rambling on about power, Dooku talked about Ventress. Not only that, but the secret affair she was having with another Jedi. Anakin's rage boiled higher than anything else ever before. He fought Dooku and slaughtered him where he stood. There was not a chance for the aging Sith to stand a chance against someone as powerful as Anakin. Palpatine would be prideful of Anakin, but their journey had to continue back to the surface of Coruscant. As it did, several Jedi generals were dispatched across the galaxy. While this was happening, Anakin would be assigned to spy on the Chancellor, though the cunning ruse was Anakin's mission from the Chancellor. He was sending Anakin to the planet of Christophsis on a political business, but in reality, Palpatine heard that the late Count Dooku was holding Asajj Ventress cap in a cell there. Anakin had relayed how he felt about Ventress to Palpatine, especially in light of the divorce of Anakin Padme, as she remarried Rush Clovis. Anakin was dedicated to find the woman he wanted to confess his love to. As Anakin left without relaying information to the Council, they were left in the dark about where he had gone. Anakin jumped into hyperspace as Obi-Wan Kenobi engaged General Grievous on Utapau. Anakin arrived in the Outer Rim as the Battle of Utapau was closing out. He entered the surface and headed for the coordinates of where the Chancellor told him to go. Ironically, it was the same location where they had met only a couple years ago. He ran into the building of which was unguarded, and when he entered he saw Ventress laying on her back with lightsaber wounds across her chest. She lay without a pulse, and Quinlan Voss laid on the floor beside her. He was still alive. Voss perked up and saw Skywalker, but it didn't matter for Voss. Anakin's blind rage had taken over, and as such, he stabbed Voss through the eye, before Voss could explain what had happened. None of anything mattered to Anakin. Both loves of his life had betrayed him. He sat down and cried because of everything that had transpired. He wanted to tell Ventress that he deeply cared about her, but it was obvious, much like Padme, she had chosen another. Anakin pondered for too long. He thought maybe he should just stick to being a Jedi. It was the Jedi way, after all, to not form attachments. Though Anakin was unsure about that, the Council hadn't exactly been the most friendly individuals to him in the galaxy. It didn't matter though. Anakin felt in the Force. Great suffering and great pain. He didn't know what it was, but he felt thousands of voices cry out within the Force. Something terrible had happened. Anakin ran to the ship where R2-D2 waited for him and hopped in. They had to get back to Coruscant, but the ship was sabotaged. There was nothing that Anakin could do. He asked for repairs and he was able to get some spare parts, but this would be difficult as Christophsis would be fading into night. There was one person Anakin was most concerned about, and that was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Though his master and him had shared their differences, he still deeply cared for his master, and his master was so very reassuring before he left for Utapau. Anakin got to work with the little visibility he had, having to rely on the Force, which was severely out of balance for him. On Coruscant, two legions, the 501st and the Coruscant Guard, marched into the Jedi Temple. There was a hooded figure amongst them. He went in unseen and moved like a blur. He cut down a Jedi without hesitation and without regret. His strikes were effortless, 
and after his victory against the four council members who came to arrest him, there was no force on Coruscant that could stop him from killing the Jedi. Palpatine flew through the crowds of Jedi, killing them in moments. The Jedi were eradicated within hours. Palpatine had separated the most powerful Jedi in the galaxy from the Jedi Temple. And now, he believed he sowed the seeds of darkness for Anakin to fall into. Anakin was distraught. He felt fear from Christophsis, and he wasn't able to help because his selfish motivation to find someone that he had cared about. Anakin didn't realize it, but he was too eager to help an individual when the people who needed him the most were dying or dead. Anakin finally got his ship up and running. By the time it did, it was no matter. The Jedi were dead, and the troops of the 501st were stationed throughout the temple to kill returning Jedi. Most of these Jedi would be lost Padawans who had lost their way. Anakin returned to the temple to find his men executing a Jedi youngling who was scared and terrified, looking for help. Anakin's heart burned with rage. He yelled at his troopers, but they didn't shoot at him until they realized that he was disobeying Order 66. The troopers then raised their guns towards him, and Anakin's blade rang out across their necks. As more of his men came to fight him head on, they were no match. The troops of which he had served with for so long were being torn apart by their commanding general. Anakin sliced up the remaining clones who were stationed there. After stabbing Commander Appa in the back as he tried to flee, Anakin sheathed his lightsaber as a few younglings ran from the shadows to his side. They had tears in their eyes, asking Master Skywalker why had they done this. Anakin told them that he didn't know as he guided them inside. Instinctually, Anakin took the role of the master for these children. Inside, he realized how important these younglings were to him, and of course the Order itself. Anakin took these younglings to the council chambers and told them to stay hidden. He promised he would return in due time. As Anakin walked out of the massive temple openings, now scarred by, ba blaster, now scarred by blaster bolts, he found two Jedi Masters approaching. Anakin ran as he saw that amazing glistening beard of his master. He hugged his master and told him he were thankful that he had survived. Anakin told them that he weren't on Coruscant until just moments before. The Jedi walked through the several dead bodies and they came to discover who was behind this mass death. The Chancellor currently was about to embark on a meeting telling the Senate that the Jedi had betrayed the Republic. The Jedi had to come up with a plan to deal with the Chancellor though. And though Anakin's severe uncertainty was keeping him off balance, he knew what he needed to do, here and now. His job in life was to bring balance to the Force, and so he prepared a plan for the Chancellor who was in session. R2-D2 was sent on his own mission as the Jedi went undercover into the Senate building, each finding their own pods. R2-D2 shut down the lights in the Senate building. As he did, the lights went dark, and three pods from across the Senate chambers began to track their way towards the podium in the middle, where the Chancellor was residing. The Jedi needed to act now, or never. The emergency light system came online as three lightsabers illuminated the darkness that came with R2-D2 turning off the emergency lighting. Two blue blades and one green. Palpatine didn't know which blue blade was Anakin's, if Anakin had actually betrayed him. Palpatine, for the first time since the Purge, felt fear. The Jedi were coming at him and he was so off guard and out of position to maintain an effective defense. Palpatine didn't even have his lightsabers. He thought he had killed the Jedi. He thought so wrong. He was so confident that the clones had done their job and how wrong he was to believe so. He leaped back but Anakin pulled him with the force as Obi-Wan pushed him from the opposite direction towards Anakin. Without hesitation or second thought, Anakin cut the Chancellor in half. The Jedi then made a great retreat into the Chancellor's chambers down below. As the lights came back on, the Senate chambers were shocked to find that the Chancellor had died. He was cut in half, and besides the little light show, no one knew who had done it. The Jedi would send a message through the archive chambers telling Jedi to relocate to a hidden Jedi world of where the Order would be rebuilt by Yoda, Kenobi, and Skywalker. The Republic would undergo a serious investigation into the war effort and what was the cause of the beginning of the war, as they would come to learn that it was Palpatine who caused the Clone Wars, from which the ban on the Jedi were lifted, but because of the great loss they had suffered, they stayed in hiding. The galaxy would find peace without the carnage of the Sith, and Anakin would soon be promoted to Master of the Order, as Obi-Wan took Yoda's mantle as Grand Master. Yoda struggled with his failures, but it didn't stop him from teaching the children of the Force. He felt that the Council and the Order be in the hands of the two brothers who helped bring balance to the force and that is our story ladies and gentlemen i hope you guys enjoyed this uh this one was really hard i really i really spent a lot of time working on this uh this is a very complex story i think i think it was hard to tell anakin falling in love with somebody that he didn't know until after he was married 
and that was something that I really didn't think about when I went into this. I really, I really challenged myself with this one, and this one I really, I spent a lot of time trying to make right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please, please down below tell me what you thought about this theory, because um, I, I really do appreciate the feedback on these videos. Uh, like I said, this this one was incredibly difficult, and trying to connect the dots was even harder to do. But I really wanted the the, the relationship to work out between uh, Asajj and Anakin, and the relationship between Anakin and Padme lead to divorce, where it almost led to divorce in the Clone Wars. So I think capitalizing on that moment really helped this narrative push forward into the future and push forward into uh, propelling the plot forward. Obviously, this this was a very difficult, very very hard. Uh, theory for me to write and I really wanted to to do right by the characters so I hope I I hope I entertain you guys for the last 40 minutes or so uh, tell me how you guys thought up tell me how you guys felt about this video I, I really did try hard on this one and um, it would mean a lot if you tell me how you how you felt about this one because I really did spend like three days on this and I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of done with this theory I'm not gonna lie I'm kind of I'm kind of done and over with it and uh, yeah, I'm curious what you guys think about it, because I think it was interesting to see the dynamic between the two of them, and I think they could relate on a lot of levels, uh, but it would be up to Anakin to, to it would be up to both of them actually, because both of them are kind of petty and both of them are kind of stubborn, it would be up to both of them to see, to actually decide if it were worth, um, worth it, you know what I mean? So, anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, don't forget to check out the Discord and subscribe for a chance to win a free lightsaber, I'm gonna go to bed now, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> Alright guys, I love you all, spread the love, and always remember... May the force be with you.